Hi, sparklers. I am so excited. I am excited to share with you some steamer recipes that can either draw things out of your skin or help put things back in. Kind of like self-medicated steamers, if you will. No, I am not a doctor. No, I am not an esthetician. I am a beauty model. As you can see, <laughs> me being super vulnerable with you guys right now. <laughs> this is me completely without makeup. Um, you can see places where I, I had a thick slime through the skincare, right? It doesn't do that. This doesn't cure anything. Um, it supports the skin's ability to heal itself. I just wanted to not only look like me, but feel like me again. So that's why I started the skincare company. I, I didn't start it to like help you all look exactly like supermodels, although I love giving tips and tricks for that too. I wanted to get back into modeling if I was even able to, or at least look and feel like the best version of myself now. And I think we all deserve that. So it's partly why I, I'm really passionate about sharing this with you, holistic beauty, so that we can all just thrive being disruptively whole, whatever that looks and more importantly feels like for us. And so you can see where there are some things that, you know, I was detoxing lately. And then about a year ago, my hormones went whack and I developed melasma. It's known as the mark of pregnancy. Um, I'm not pregnant. <laughs> I have basically a tattooed mustache to my upper lip. Like, what the? F <laughs> yeah. I'm grateful that now I can at least put makeup on and it'll look good the way I expect it to for the most part. And even in some of my latest modeling photos, you can see it shining through the makeup. If you actually look for it, they're not shopped out, which to me says progress, a lot of it. But this feels really um, scary to me because in the past, um, models were only as good as their worst photo. So I'm being really, really brave. Doing facial steam is a thing where you can't really have BB cream on it. I'm going to explain this video to you like it's a full facial or almost a full facial DIY at home. You can modify this to be whatever you want it to be. There is no wrong way. The only thing that is wrong is if you do not actively listen to your skin. And secondly, please don't burn yourself with the steam. We get into some incredibly meaty in-depth content in here. So here is a thousand foot bird's eye view snapshot. Number one, I'm going to share with you how I focus on a particular skin goal. In this case, it's one of two goals, which has to do with getting the best skin uptake through the steam or skin purging, depending on the desired goal, pushing things out of the skin or putting things into the skin. I'm also going to explain with you number two, uh, how I select ingredients to incorporate into the boiling water. And some of those things even piggyback with one another, penetrating even deeper than they would otherwise. And number three, we are going to integrate skincare products for more obvious, quick, yet kind, dramatic change. Because frankly, we want to see a difference and we don't want to have to pay several thousand dollars to have somebody laser our face. We want to support our skin to frankly heal itself. I do have a suggestion because when you start this uh, routine we're working with steam so it's going to be a little bit of sweating involved there's going to be intracellular communication going on here are some suggestions on things that you can do to take care of your skin before we start this isn't required but it just really helps because we're going to have a lot of blood circulation coming to the surface of our skin and we're feeding it from one side of the wall so we really ought to make sure that we have food that is feeding and nourishing our skin where we have heightened um, protein synthesis and collagen being stimulated and elastin and all of that other stuff from the inside of our bodies. Being hydrated in advance is going to do a lot to help it work better because when our cells don't have water, they don't speak to one another um, energetically as well as through the little messenger cells and things like that as, as, as effectively. And so being hydrated beforehand is really, really nice. For me, I use this. I just happen to have a lot extra on hand right now. So I've been doing that more and more often. I also like my matchas every morning, but for like a really big like kick in the pants, I like the barley life. No, nobody's paying me to say this. And then also there's like the vitamin C that's lipospheric. I found that this one seems to be the best one for me where I can tell a big difference quickest, especially when I need to boost my immune system. But the reason that I 
I'm just thinking that this is something you might enjoy is because it's attached to a liposome and so it can go through the phospho phospholipid bilayer of the skin. We'll talk a little bit more about that and why it's important to steaming, especially when we get into it with a few additives in the water here in a minute. So you can do just water and be just fine, or you can go the extra mile and really amp up the supplies that are in your bloodstream right now. Completely up to you. You want to start by washing your face. I found that when I start doing steams, it's kind of like if I just wash my face, my whole body is just kind of like, ugh, kind of like going outside when you first step into the rain and you're like, oh, I'm wet. I hate that feeling. So I'm gonna go hop in the shower now. You do you, you can stop the tape right here and I'll be right back. Go double cleanse. I always love to feel after a shower. Those moving electrons just charge me up. Everything's lighter and brighter. If you're wanting to do this as a quick thing, this isn't for you, but if you're doing this as more of an at-home spa treatment to self-medicate or to self-focus, just to treat something specifically, I would recommend considering that you exfoliate. It may be that you were using contact sponge in the shower like I was. Contact sponges are one of my favorite things to use because they're Courtney proof. I have a tendency to be very hard on things. If things last, <laughs> they're probably made really, really well. I also have a tendency to be very hard on my skin. As an Enneagram 3, I like things to work well. I like to know that it's happening. That quality is also involved in that. So, I mean, we don't want much. We just want everything on a silver platter. No big deal. So, you may have already done some light exfoliating when you washed your face anyway. But what I like to do is to use an exfoliating mask. I love the Restore Light because it's got like five ingredients in it, rose flower water with antioxidants and calming properties in it, and the glycolic acid in it is just under 10%, which is the maximum legal limit for over-the-counter. The pumpkin spice autumn detox mask is another one. It's an enzyme mask. It's an active one, but I've also had girls who have eczema use it on their skin, and surprisingly, they actually really liked it. We've also got the pineapple ever after, but you might have even like a cream exfoliator of some sort at home that you want to use. Just make sure that it's not like St. Ives peach apricot scrub. No, we don't want any scrubbing here. Gentle exfoliation is the key for this. And the reason why is because if you're wanting to put things into the skin as your focus for this, we want to open, make sure that the gateways aren't blocked up with gunk, grime, leftover wax, makeup residue, dead skin cells that are still stuck in our pores or at the gates of them just kind of hanging on, right? Kind of gross, I know, but it's true. Also, if there are things that you're wanting to come out, this will make it easier for your skin and the sweat because you're gonna sweat. Sweating is the best way to glow, let me tell you. Oh my goodness, like the number one thing. I won't go into that. I'll make a video on it later, I guess. But if they're blocked, and they didn't have to be, then why not just make it that much more impactful? So if you're interested in this, go ahead and pause the tape now. Do something to kindly exfoliate your skin. Okay, next step is to really reaffirm what it is you're planning to do through this. You can multitask, absolutely. And a lot of these ingredients, they already do. So you win no matter what. Okay, next step is to reaffirm the focus of what it is you're trying to do for this at-home spa steam treatment. The good news is that most of the ingredients that we're talking about potentially incorporating are gonna multitask. You win no matter what. So don't overthink it. Focus just for, for potpourri today on what it is that drew you to this. Something to pull things out, something to like push things in. But this also does help with bringing things out. Reaffirm why you wanted that. Are you wanting something to push things into your skin because it's dry and flaky? Is it bright red and inflamed and cracked and irritated? I hope not. Um, what is it that you're wanting to shove into your skin and why? If you're wanting to pull things out, why? Are you broken out? Do you feel like your pores are looking a little bit larger than they need to be? Do you feel like you're puffy? What is it that's causing you to want to do this? Because I'm going to address pulling things out as if you have congestion. And I'm going to talk about putting things in as if we're trying to get your skin to, to that next level, if you will. 
kind of getting yourself to that aging younger platform, if you will. This one's a little bit more of just getting ready for the platform. This one, depending on how bad your skin is, you know, if it's dry, weathered, cracked, angry, all that stuff, maybe we're just getting you to the platform also. But if you're really just doing this as preventative, like beauty glow all over good everything, I mean, it can actually be that thing that boosts you like big time. I'm hoping that I've walked you through all of these many words so that in your mind, you can kind of see through the lens that I'm looking at. It might be that you really do want to pull things out, but that that your skin can handle a little bit more than say somebody over here. Only you know what you need. I'm not a medical professional. This is not medical advice. This is what I do and what I enjoy doing to my skin. You need to be thinking about what's best for you and why. I'm gonna take us through probably two steams. The first one is really like the beginning thing and then the second one is sort of like the set off. skin or even over here where if, if you're just wanting to have your skin absorb more I mean we talked for both of them about exfoliating right how it's better no matter if you want things to coat out or to be put in right now we're, if we comb the skin and also just kind of start getting that, that mist going in there it's gonna make it so that the skin almost relaxes and calms down because when it's angry it's nothing can get through right and sometimes if our skin is dry, it's like scales. It becomes like armor. We can further soften that for anything that the, uh, the exfoliation didn't finish taking care of, the buildup and things like that. Start getting water molecules and other ingredients going through the semi-permeable membrane. The junk out, the good stuff in, and our body's smart. It knows what to do with those molecules, just depending on it has a negative electron or charger, like, yeah, anyway, the chemistry is really, really fun. So we're gonna start with something that's calming straight out of the gate. So here are some easy options and I can list some other dry ingredients that you might want to pull from. I went to the health food store last night and they have adjusted business hours with everything that's happening with the world health stuff going on. And so I wasn't able to get some of the stuff that I really wanted to show you, but I found this when I ran by Whole Foods. It has a pretty good mix, I've never tried it before, but it was like 14 bucks. And it has a really decent brew of some stuff that it's actually gonna get anyway. Holy basil, lavender, rosebuds and petals. Calendula, really calming nice. I love calendula in a lot of our products too. Jasmine, so good for your skin, you guys. And the essential oil is actually pretty expensive. So, I mean, I don't know how much is actually in here, but you can see it. It's kind of cool. Rose, geranium. French green clay. I wanted to show you what that looks like. See, you know, look how incredibly colorful that is when you're up close. All of those amazing ingredients. They smell kind of herbally, but they also smell really good. And it came with a little baggie over here. I'm gonna actually put it in hot water and we're gonna look and see together just how much milk, if you will, will come out of it in the hot water. If you're looking for something cheap, this is chamomile and it's like four bucks an ounce. So you can get a large bag of it for cheap. I do not recommend putting these loose if you're gonna repurpose them in the bathtub, just FYI, cause it kind of feels like creepy crawly things all over your body, which is why I was really happy about this baggie. You can also do green tea. So look and see what's in your cupboards. Um, the chamomile, however, smells to die for. And when I pulled it out from my closet of ingredients that I work from, my fiance actually came out of his office. He's working from home today. He's like, what is that glorious smell? And he thought maybe it was roses or something. So this, actually smells divine and it's really known for um, reducing stress and anxiety and calming things. Ooh, the back and forth. Okay, so something else to consider. There have been a lot of medical studies done. And yes, I mean, studies that you can read that are published publicly from the National Institutes of Health, talking about the potential of using essential oils as a delivery mechanism to make medications more effective. 
Remember how earlier we were talking about the the vitamin C packets and how they can be absorbed to the phospholipid bilayer of the like stomach wall, basically, instead of having to be digested and hitting the bloodstream then later on after it's been chewed up and maybe less effective. The essential oils are kind of like that. Like, like think of it this way, your skin repels water when we're in the shower, but you can put oil on your skin and your skin will absorb it because it's made of the same kind of molecule. So the delivery mechanism is something to really think about. So if you're going to use essential oils, be thinking about the quality of the products that you're actually gonna put on afterward, making sure that things are cleanly sourced, that you trust the company, maybe not using some cheap brand of makeup immediately afterward or something. I know personally from Lyme treatment that there are certain things that you can take that allow things to cross the blood-brain barrier. And you have to be very careful about what it is that you're taking, where it's sourced from, what you eat, what you expose yourself to, about being around people who are spraying for bugs, stuff like that, because you're vulnerable. You've taken stuff to open the floodgates, so to speak, or to at least pu pull it in through the doors. I recently did doxycycline with the name of it's evading me. I've done both of them previously in the past, but I took like a fourth of the amount of doxy and I couldn't handle it anymore because it, driv it drove it into my bones and into my teeth, which was the point. We hadn't been getting certain things. And so anyway, um, there are things that you can pair that amplify the effect, right? And essential oils might be one of those things that you want to take precautions on because it can help. And it can also make other things more readily absorbable. I don't mean to scare you. Because they work so well, they're incredible for what they do to your skin, particularly when paired with steam and paired with products and things that help you to amplify those effects. Now, that's one thing I want you to know. Essential oils, period, help delivery mechanisms. But there are also things called driving oils when paired with other essential oils, help them to go deeper. Two of those are Kaboba, Kabobia. It's one of my favorites. It's like a light, uh, very complex smell. <laughs> There's nothing like it. I know that it works for reducing inflammation and pain because when I first got turned on to essential oils, I was invited over to somebody's home. I know they don't recommend that you do this, but this is, I was, I was desperate. I was so overwhelmed with pain. Just the light, the sound, the physical pain, it was all so hard. And I just needed to make it stop so I could act human. I took kaboba and lavender and just swished it around my mouth because you have so many nerves that go through your teeth. They're like the switch breakers of the body. And within like five minutes, like stuff had hit my system. And the panic wasn't as bad, the physical pain to sit down and twist, you know, because the neck pain and stuff like that, the intensity was lifted and then some. I'll often do that with myrrh because that helps a lot as well. And one of you sparklers actually turned me on to myrrh like a few years ago, so thank you for that. Whether you're using it topically or off-label uses, which I'm not recommending that you do, be thoughtful. There's a reason why things are labeled the way that they are. Another one that's a really good driving oil is, now my oil spread here on the ground. Peppermint, haha. <laughs> and actually a chelator too. So, you know, it just kind of depends on what you're trying to do. If you're afraid of using oils where they're not in the budget right now, you're wanting to use what's in your closet, whatever it happens to be, this is fine. This is great. You could do the steam stuff without the stuff if you wanted. For me personally, I like things that are kind to my skin and that I can see them working. But that's why I go with essential oils. They're highly, highly concentrated and they do cross that phospholipid bilayer and they do help other things cross the phospholipid bilayer. And some of them even amplify each other further to cross the three layers of the skin. You know, if you're looking for something that's too, if your skin's a little bit dry, cold winter dry, try lavender. It hydrates better than parsley and raspberry leaf. It's very calming, anti-inflammatory, antifungal, antibacterial. It's an easy no-brainer. It's readily accessible almost everywhere. Spearmint is a little discussed option. You might like combining the two of them together. And the spearmint along with the, the lavender might actually do some stuff to kind of, you know, open up the pores a little bit more. If you have access to it, mix it with one of the driving oils, either the caboba or the peppermint. I was doing some reading and I also found that pine may work as a thriving oil. You know, on the other side of the spectrum, if you've got
angry skin that is overproducing oil and is broken out and inflamed. You really can't go wrong with pine and geranium together. You, you can't go wrong with them anyway, even if you were wanting to start it out here. Um, you could, you could, anybody could do either of these. So use what you have. <laughs> Let me read to you what this actually does. I'm using an essential oil reference guide. That's an app. It's a one-time fee. I definitely recommend getting it because it's like in your pocket everywhere instead of having to have a textbook with you everywhere you go. Geranium is great for dry skin. It's great for air purification, but what does it do to skin that breathes? Purification. Um, Staph MRSA, sensitive skin, bruises, uh, where is this? Work, uh, inflammation, there's a specific line I'm looking for in here. Haha. <laughs> uh, this oil may be used for acne. Bleeding, listen to this in parentheses, increases the bleeding to eliminate toxins, then stops. So your body like expels. What do you think that your skin trying to spew things out of your skin is going to do if you're sweating? Can we help it? So geranium is going to be really healing in a variety of ways, but it's also going to help expel. I hate the way it smells. I am so sorry. If you like the way something smells, you emotionally need it. If you hate the way something smells, you physically need it. And it actually shifts over time the more you're exposed. So it's pretty, pretty fascinating. Okay, it also works with burns, circulatory problems, improving blood flow. Hello, please deliver more nutrients to my face so that it can fix itself. Thank you. Eczema, hormonal imbalance, inflammation. There are a lot of other things. Ah -ha -ha -ha. Regenerating tissue and nerves. Hello. Skin may balance the sebum, which is the fatty secretion in the sebaceous glands of the skin that keeps the skin supple. So if you're too dry, it might help. If you're too oily, check please. Sores, sore throats, wounds. So it's basically focused on emotional balance and skin. It's amazing how the emotional stuff in our skin are just... Actually, it's the feeling of separation that often has to do with underlying emotional cause of disease from a homeopathic standpoint um, for, for breakouts and acne, which is just kind of interesting. Kind of, where does this come from? But the more you delve into it, the more you find out it's true. So geranium is like a yes to anybody, but especially if you've got over oily skin, that's for you, girl. Caboba is my favorite driving oil, but if you've got peppermint and it's cheap, go ahead and throw a drop in and you're gonna close your eyes so that you don't like, you know, it's very purifying, right? And you'll start crying. So make sure your eyes are closed. We're gonna dive in here. I wanna show you how well some of this stuff actually gets into the water. And then we're gonna move on to our second round of potential things that you might use to like self-medicate or to focus on something that you wanna cosmetically enhance. I'm going to serve up some stuff here in a ladle, partly because I was afraid of you guys trying to steam things, steam your face over a fire and accidentally burning yourself. Frankly, it's what I do. If you do end up doing it, I never, ever, ever use a towel over my head because it gets too hot. And I like being able to control the rate of acceleration and all of that stuff. Like I said, as an Enneagram 3, I want things fast and I want to see that they're working. But I recommend that you be really, really thoughtful about choosing if you want to do that or not, especially if this is your first time with steam. I'm also using this porcelain white bowl because I want us to be able to see just how well these dried flowers melt into the water. I've got my stopwatch up. We're going to start. Okay, so about 18 seconds have elapsed. Just bag. Oh, it's already starting to bleed for us. That's nice. Definitely can smell it. Okay. Let the whole bag submerged. I get some more water here. Scalpel. <laughs> Just kidding. This is for everybody who is busy with kids at home. Let's put that. Ha ha ha. Crazy life. It's just flat out nice when something works when you say it should. 
that's pretty impressive so far. It's only a minute, so you're supposed to let stuff steep for a while. If you do end up using a bowl like this, you can safely, in my opinion, put a towel over your head to make a steam tent. And that's exactly what I'm going to do right now. Here we go. Yeah, I definitely think the steam would be way better if it were immediate so that the steam were trapped in here. So don't do what I did with the delayed time. But me being a three, I'm kind of like, um, can we get some more now, please? Just doing some nice softening. Smells nice. Definitely wish that I had a lot more steam coming up from it, though. Starting to actually build up. Skin starting to get gushy, which is nice. Hello. For me personally, when I'm doing it too, and you'll do this anyway, just because we're all in tune, but I like actually rotating my face or getting the forehead a little closer or the chin a little closer or whatever it happens to be because those pores need love too. There's a ton more stuff oozing out of the bag. It's almost like a golden rod saturated yellow over by the bag, maybe closer to orange even. Okay, so let's just say that time's up. I've been at this now for three minutes. There's still some steam coming up. I like more steam, so it's up to you on what you think your skin needs. Listen to your skin, please don't burn yourself. But I, I love a good steaming. And while that was really nice, I still feel like I miss my essential oils. My skin does feel very calmed. Now, based on whatever your theme is, pulling things out or putting things back in, thoughtful of angry, inflamed, dry, confused skin, where, where are we with that? Do a mask of some sort. Okay, so for me, what I'm gonna do next is do a mask hydrating mask and go back in under the steam and just kind of give myself a massage, press it into the skin, do some lymph drainage, just kind of let it drip off my face and just let it be and get kind of like messy. If you are one of the people who's doing this because you want to draw things out rather than put things in, then you might like the Magical Merfolk mask. I think it's 35 bucks in the store. It's incredibly, incredibly gentle. There are no preservatives in it whatsoever because it's dry and you can add things to it based on whatever it is that you need. It's also got some minerals that will nourish the skin from the beetroot powder, especially because of the beetroot powder and there are a lot of trace minerals in there that a lot of people don't even have in their diets, let alone our skin getting them because let's face it, our food goes through every other organ of the body before it gets to our skin. So it's going to actually put back some fun stuff while very gently and kindly working as a clay mask to pull some things out that you've already begun to loosen using your first round of steam. So there's that, and then the hydration, smoothing, lifting. If you have a serum, if you have a serum with sodium hyaluronate in it, hyaluronic acid, you could probably use this as a good time right now to put it on your face and also use it as a mask. If, if you're in like a dry climate, normally, Sodium hyaluronate without a, like a cream over the top, something occlusive to keep the moisture in, will draw moisture out of your skin and dry out your skin. But because we're doing this over steam, it's actually going to draw the steam into your skin, draw the water, the moisture into the skin. Whew. So I will go around. If you are doing the drawing out or a mask that's clay ash, we're not doing it over the steam. You're giving your body what it needs to like let it dry and do the pulling motion, and then we'll come back, okay? I just wanted to show you guys before I take this back to the kitchen, I'm actually gonna save this and put it in a bathtub and soak later tonight. I'm kind of excited about it. There are other additives I often put in the tub, but I'm gonna try this one tonight. But point in case, look at how gold that is compared to how it was earlier. It has given us some really good yield. So I'm not gonna waste that. I'm gonna use that tonight and soak. I know I didn't really go into it, but if you're looking for something more astringent and essential oils just aren't for you right now, hibiscus leaf or hibiscus flowers rather, that is a good one. And you can also get ground up myrrh. 
Like you can get the myrrh resin and sometimes they like powder it up. And I like that because it dissolves in the water quicker. And that's going to help to soothe and calm down anything that's painful. It's also going to help hydrate the skin. So I'd probably shift towards more of the, um, the hibiscus flowers, especially if you're going to like put it in with the geranium so that you have the, the balancing and the astringent action happening. And then this is part two. What we're going to do next for people with skin who's like wanting to push things out is we're going to make it a little bit more possible for your skin to push things. For people who have wanting, are wanting to put good things into the skin, what we're going to look for is hydration, helping support your skin's natural ability to rewrite its own DNA, and helping the tissue have some extra trace nutrients that it needs. There are a couple of different combinations here that I really like. Some of them are more expensive than others, and some of them I don't have, but they are in a essential oil blend. I change it every time just because it's fun and I like listening to my skin, and sometimes what I have in inventory is different. Let me show you some of those options for mix and match now. Whew, I am just about out of energy, guys. I've got to wrap this up. Sometimes we spark life outward, and sometimes we have to keep those things to ourselves so that we can regenerate our own bodies. That's what self-care and blurring those lines between self-care and external presence is all about, yeah? Okay, so let's wrap this up. Sort of recapping as a reminder. Pete and repeat, we're in a boat. People in who was left? <laughs> anyway. Driver oils. We're talking about drawing things out first. And a lot of people are unaware of having elimination pathways in the body or that term if you get into holistic or naturopathic or environmental medicine it becomes a bit of a focal point and the only reason i'm going off on this tangent is so that you can understand and experience it for yourself in your skin and see if this is a necessity or not because this might indicate what oils you might consider using for yourself. It's how I decide if there's an oil that I need for myself at times. So for instance, for a while I was using an infrared sauna several times a week. And infrared saunas, I won't get into why they're so amazing and all that stuff, you know, sweating out toxins, right? With some well, Lyme and co-infections, uh, Herxheimer's reaction is when you kill them successfully and they release neurotoxins that make you hurt and hurt and everything is bad for a while. You're a very, very sick pup dog. And if you could sweat out those toxins as quickly as they were dying, you could keep from having those die-off symptoms or at least not as severe. Now, the cool thing about essential oils is that if you're doing something like raindrop therapy or other things, the oils have a tendency to encapsulate these toxins and carry them naturally out of the body. And of course, our skin is an elimination pathway as well. And so it's going to have that overlapping tendency anyway, because that's just how God made it. Now, with myself and having blocked elimination pathways or sometimes seeing them healthier at times than other times, I saw that really clearly with infrared saunas where I could get in for like 20 minutes or more and finally break a sweat. But if I'd begun doing that mm, three or four times later, all of a sudden I could hop in and in five minutes I'd break a sweat. In two minutes even, I could break a sweat. And that's an indicator of immediately being able to expel or eliminate or breathe take out the garbage, have your body <sighs> with that constant switching that's taking place from their environment and our, and our internal environment, right? There's constantly that song and dance going on. If you are one of the people who's focused on drawing things out, whether it's inflammation or some sort of like, you know, the look of like a bacterial acne, fungal, I don't, I know that sounds really weird. I, I don't know, I can't see your skin. But if drawing things out is more of your focus, I would ask you at this point to consider if you've actually been sweating underneath the towel or over the pot or whatever you're doing, or if it's just a buildup of condensation. If you're needing help on this next go around to eliminate more, to actually like get those elimination pathways going. Here are a list of oils. It's not comprehensive, but these are some oils that are known to help you sweat. Pseudorphic oils is what they're classified as, and they're for toxin release. Thyme, especially. 
helps promote sweating. Thyme is a hot oil, everybody. I don't know if you've ever put it on your skin or not. One drop. It, it's true. And you'll notice this if any of you used peppermint in the last go around. Like it's kind of intense at first and then it like burns off with the steam. Of course, the, how quick that is and isn't it just depends if you're making a tent over your head or if you're over deep of the, over a boiling pot. One drop at a time, please, and mix it with some other oils. Do not use the thyme by itself. Hyssop. Have you heard the phrase, cleanse my heart with hyssop? It's true. Rosemary, juniper, lavender. Go figure, right? And German chamomile. Also very soothing. Those are all great for toxin release. Clove might also be of interest to you. And eucalyptus radiata, R-A-D-I-A-T-A. -A -A. Now that one doesn't necessarily focus on helping you sweat more, but it is going to help vasodilate and help things talk together a little bit more. And it's very, very well known for working on your respiratory system and skin as a focus. So it's pretty cool. Things that I enjoy using also besides that, obviously the eucalyptus works. Pine, if you have it, it may function as a driving oil. Feel free to throw that in there. It works really well with juniper. If you have Northern Lights Black Spruce, that's awesome too. How do we get this to focus? Here. Peppermint can easily be put in there. Frankly, I'm a big fan of purification also. Purification oil is a intellectual property of Young Living Essential Oils. I just happened to buy my stuff from them. And this is a mix of citronella, rosemary, lemongrass, tea tree, lavender, myrtle, and that's all. And what they say about it, for those of you who are not so familiar, just, you know, Reminder, reminder. Funnel is really good for breaking up fluids and toxins and cleansing tissues. Just FYI. So this is coming from my essential oils reference guide. Uh, the individual oils in this blend have some powerful antiseptic, antibacterial, antifungal, and sanitizing properties. This blend is therefore useful for killing odors and their bacteria, molds, and fungus. It kills anaerobic bacteria. It purifies and cleanses bacteria in the air and neutralizes mildew, cigarette smoke, and other noxious odors. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, neutralizes poison from insects. Good first aid and sterilizing wounds and cuts. Great with dealing with problems related to digestive, emotional balance, and skin. It seems like skin, the emotions, or nervous system, and stomach are all always just combined. That's why our skin's the snapshot. Yeah, so it's a really good one. And again, keep your eyes closed. There's no reason to be in pain. And it's probably not healthy for your eyes anyway. So that's something to consider. Also, I like my personal, personal fave go-to that I want to do every time I see my face is a mixture of caboba, myrrh, frankincense. If I have sandalwood, I like it. But frankincense is so drying on your skin, even though it rewrites your DNA and your genetic code, which is so cool. But it's so drying that I stopped topically using it. But when I combine them, I get the calming and, and soothing effects and the driving effects and the rewriting effects. It's like, to me, I feel like it's medicinal. I don't have a full bottle of myrrh and frankincense on me right now. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the caboba. And I've got it in a couple of blends. Three Wise Men is, is one. A combination of Royal Hawaiian Sandalwood, Juniper, Frankincense, Black Spruce, and Myrrh. So that's an easy one to do. And frankly, it could be great whether you're wanting to pull out or put in, because it's going to help more with the calming. And Egyptian Gold, Frankincense, Canadian Balsam, Lavender, Myrrh, Hyssop, Northern Lights Black Spruce, Cedarwood, Velvet Ear. Oh, so good for your skin, you guys. Like, if I'm really going to spoil myself, I'm going to combine Velvet Ear with Helichrysium and uh, Bergamot and Jasmine and maybe some Clary Sage. <laughs> it ain't cheap, yo. Cedarwood, Velvet Ear, Rose, which is the highest frequency essential oil, also the most expensive, I think. And Cinnamon Bark. I'm probably going to do like few drops of this, few drops of this, and definitely put in some Kaboa for my stuff because it's going to help to put that hydration back in and soothe and allow my skin to rewrite itself. So that's what I'm going to do now. Hey, 
maybe you guys have only done one sting, maybe you've done two, maybe you've done your own thing, it doesn't matter. But for those of you who are ready to wrap it up, here's how I would suggest wrapping it up. Skin pH is a big, big deal. And we've been putting foreign substances in steam and basic, basically making an aerosol out of it and combining it with things that help it penetrate even further. And frankly, you and I are not chemists. So let's use something that a chemist has professionally formulated. I love the blurescent smells amazing. And yes, it's got chamomile and tea tree and lavender and, you know, aloe leaf, all these soothing, wonderful, uplifting properties for our skin, and it is pH balanced. So spritz, spritz, spritz to make sure that your pH balance is brought back to normal. We hope that your skin is also very dewy and gushy still. This should be done immediately after. Obviously, I'm getting tired, so I'm rushing to the end like a banshee. Infuse Immortel is one of my favorite go-tos for, for serum because it's got CoQ10 in it. Fierce antioxidant. Holy fruit loops, you guys. Hyaluronic acid. We already know about it basically like being Juvederm in a bottle. Alpha lipoic acid, which is again, one of the most concentrated antioxidants that you can get that can be sustainably sourced and pro vitamins B5 and B3, which is phenomenal because we're talking about skin integrity and keeping that skin barrier super healthy. So while we've got these things that can carry and make things more medicinal draw in. Let's put some of the best possible high quality, cleanly sourced, concentrated, but kind ingredients on our skin. And you're going to very gently just like push it in. I've got an entire video on how to like actually like put it through the basketball hoop of your skin pores. So you can click on that link there. But just take your time and really love it and put it in. And it might be that you want to follow up with, say right now we're in the winter time. So maybe let's follow up with like a gel type of thing. And then maybe you want to do an eye cream and then maybe you want to seal things up with your creation. And then maybe you want to like add another layer because let's face it, we're packing the goodness into the skin. If I have the energy and I don't, what I would do is steam it and do all of that do up to this point and derma roll it's really impactful particularly where you're already you know like making it possible for your skin to absorb more and now you're like irrigating it into your skin and if you want to and have one if chosen to afford one then you can end with your microcurrent and really finish driving it and stimulating and nourishing you basically nourish the nerves in your entire face and all of the nerves to the entire body run through your face. So you've nourished them with a symphony of highly sourced, hopefully, essential oils or dried herbs, steam, and some of the best possible ingredients that will help you spark life. Be sure to seal it in so that you keep that going strong. And I hope you're also doing it at bedtime because then your skin is going to lap it up even more, regenerate itself, and it'll be really fun to see your skin in the morning. All right, let me know how you liked this. Let me know if you have any special requests or questions based off of the video. Have a good one, you guys.